In 2023, 250,000 people were laid off from their tech job. In 2024, as of the writing of this video, 50,000 folks in tech were laid off. And unless entire lines of business or organizations go under, it's the low performers and low level staff that are getting let go first. With AI progressing at breakneck speed, the difficulty getting any entry level positions, and the fact that companies are only hiring for senior roles and above, it's clear that senior engineer is the new junior engineer. If you're a junior or a mid-level engineer right now, you need to become not one as quickly as possible. Getting to the next level as soon as possible is the best insurance policy you can have in these turbulent times. Nobody knows when the recovery will happen or if it will happen at all. In this video, I'll give you three pieces of advice that will accelerate your promotion prospects. If you're new to the channel, my name is Steve Wynn, and I'm a former Amazon principal software engineer. I recently quit my job to become a full-time content creator. My goal is to make the videos that I wish existed when I was coming up. I've taken the goal to help 1 million people grow their careers, which includes getting promoted faster. The fastest way to get that goal is through creating free YouTube content. If you have a question or topics that you'd like me to cover regarding promotion, leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer them in subsequent videos. If you wanna work closely with me, I have a paid program called Speedrun to Promotion. The next cohort is launching on April 19th, 2024 via live office hours, where I'll answer your questions about promotion live and I'll also share details about a big price reduction. To jumpstart this, I'm giving away free sample content from the course so you can get a sense of whether the program is right for you. Details about the live stream and free video content can be found in the description below. Before I give you my first piece of advice, let me tell you two stories about my own promotion journey that will illustrate the point. In 2016, I thought I was ready to be promoted to principal engineer. I'd been a senior for about four years and I was kicking butt. I had led several cross team initiatives and I was clearly the best engineer across the four dev teams within my org. But because of some reorganization and attrition, I didn't have a manager a level above me for quite some time. And when I finally did get a manager, he was terrible. Let's name him Bob to protect his identity. Bob wasn't technically deep. Bob didn't show up to meetings, but somehow was still a micromanager. And to be honest, Bob wasn't a nice guy. The next step in my promotion was that he had to submit a request for promotion assessment on my behalf into an internal website. A month before the deadline, I made my request to Bob to send it in. He said it was all good. A week before, I again reminded Bob to submit the request. I provided all of the necessary materials. He just had to click a button. He said he would do it. The day before the deadline and the day of the deadline, I reminded Bob again. I told him how important it was to me. Bob, I said, please, if you don't, I'll have to wait another six months. I'll let you guess what happened. If you guess that he never put the request in, you win our grand prize. I still don't understand how Bob got to where he was. It's a mystery I think about to this day. After the incident, I didn't find work fulfilling anymore. I hated being there and dreaded coming into the office. Three years later, I was still a senior engineer, but I had a different manager. Let's name him Carl. Carl was awesome. To be more specific, Carl and I were awesome together. He was technically deep. He cared about our project and the tech stack and the team. When he couldn't make it to important meetings, he had enough trust to send me in his stead. This gave me a ton of visibility that I wouldn't have otherwise. We were so in sync, we finished each other's sentences. Work was invigorating again. So much so that I looked forward to coming into the office. We wrote a lot of great software and landed a ton of projects in this time frame. Carl did put the request into the system for my promotion, but my promotion didn't go through. It hurt, but I got some feedback that I could work with. Of course, after that rejection, Carl told me that he was quitting Amazon. It was a double whammy for me, and I felt the feelings that I had when I was dealing with Bob. But this time, it was different. On his way out, Carl made sure to properly hand off my promo packet to my new manager and put in a good word for me. My new manager was immediately supportive because of Carl's endorsement, and I was promoted to principal shortly after he left the company. Carl also gave me an unexpectedly large compensation increase on his way out. Thanks, Carl. I still remember you hooking me up. The difference between Bob and Carl was night and day. And that's my first point. The relationship with your manager is the most important one you'll have at work. 
and it's definitely the most important one you'll have for your next promotion. To get promoted, your boss has to stick their neck out for you, on top of doing a bunch of extra work to push your packet through, including writing your promotion document. They don't do that for people that they don't have a good relationship with, and they can't do that if they're incompetent. So. What do you do if you have a bad relationship with your manager or they're just terrible to work with? If you can't repair your relationship with them and you care about promotion, you need to move teams and find a new manager. If you can't do that internally, you may need to find a job elsewhere. If you do move, make sure that you, as much as you can, don't move to another bad manager by at least making sure to talk to your prospective teammates. I estimate Bob cost me at least two and a half years in my promotion journey. That's easily a half million dollars in total compensation between senior engineer and principal Principle, not even accounting for market growth in that time. I could have bought a Lambo with that money. Kidding aside, half a million dollars is life-changing money for almost everybody on the planet. But I wasn't thinking clearly, and I didn't realize that I had a choice. I really liked the product that I was working on and my teammates, so I thought I could work around an unsupportive manager. But working around a bad manager relationship is impossible when it comes to promotion. And a competent, supportive manager that you have a good relationship with is the fastest way to get promoted. This is a perfect example of the cost of inaction. Back then, I didn't understand that I was making a choice by sticking with my bad manager. If you're at a place where you couldn't possibly get promoted by doing nothing to upgrade that situation, you are choosing not to be promoted. Moving teams or finding a new job is a pain in the butt, but that's what the cost of promotion is. If I found Carl four years earlier, I'd be rolling around in that Lambo. Don't make that same mistake as me and you'll get promoted much faster. Before I get into my second point, I'd like to pose a set of hypothetical questions for you about which would be a better promotion project. The first scenario, A, you could work on automating a bunch of tests, which is gonna take some time, or B, you can continue to add more tests and run those tests manually. Which one would you do? The second scenario, A, you could create a scalable architecture to make feature development faster, or B, you could spend your time developing critical features. The third scenario, A, spend some time and effort to make your workloads more efficient and therefore save the company some money, or B, continue to use the existing infrastructure and add more workloads to it, A or B. So what are your answers if you wanna get promoted as quickly as possible? Now, for many of you, you answered A to all of the questions because delivering automation, designing a scalable architecture, and finding efficiencies on paper would be the most promotion-worthy activities. And in a vacuum, they are the highest leverage and most impactful choices. But you don't work in a vacuum. And that's my point. The best promotion projects are based on what the needs and values of the company are. You can actually set your promotion prospects back by doing work that sounds like they should be promotion worthy, but aren't aligned with what's needed and valued. So let's examine the hypotheticals again. You could A, work on automating a bunch of tests, or you could B, continue to add more tests and run those tests manually. Test automation would be really valuable if your team is spending a significant amount of time manually running tests. Automation would be great because it would save a ton of time and the impact would be clear. However, if your team's bandwidth isn't affected by running manual tests or you're in a time crunch for a big delivery or say you don't even have tests at all, much less automated tests, it might be the right move to continue down the manual testing route. It could just be as impactful as automation. For the next one, you could do A, and create a scalable architecture to make feature development faster, or B, you could spend time developing critical features. This is similar to the last example. If feature development is really slow, then the investment is worth it. There are several critical features that need to come out. Put your energy there. One thing that I'll call out about this example is that it's really important to couch your decision in reality. Large projects like creating scalable architectures usually requires the alignment and support of several teams. It could also likely require work from them. If teams are resource constrained, getting buy-in for your proposals may be difficult, especially if you can't describe a credible approach because you don't have visibility into what adjacent teams are doing and what their priorities are. So it might take a lot of extra work to get that buy-in. If your project will require a team of developers and the support of many teams, it's going to take a lot more than a good idea to get that project off the ground. Finally, there's A, spend the time and effort to make your workloads more efficient and save the company money, or B, to continue to use the existing infrastructure and to add more workloads to it. If your company is hemorrhaging money on cloud resources that they don't need, A seems like a no-brainer, but you have to keep in mind that the juice needs to be worth the squeeze. 
If it'll take your team three months to move to a different data store to save $5,000 a month, you should recognize that your team's bandwidth is worth way more than that, on top of the opportunity costs of what they could have built in that time period. You wanna find places where you can make a big impact while minimizing the effort required to realize those savings. It's difficult to see the company wasting money because there are likely a lot of inefficiencies in any system that exists. But if it takes more resources than you'll save, that shows a lack of judgment that will hold your promotion prospects back. You wouldn't want to have a two hour departmental meeting on the fact that there are too many meetings. So don't do the equivalent with your day-to-day -day work. You want to develop a nose for impact based on what your company values and what they need. Figure out what those are and you'll be well on your way to your next promo. If you don't know what those are, I would start there. Before I get into my final point, I wanna talk about a common failure mode when it comes to promotion, especially promos past senior engineer. The staff and principal levels at a company are oftentimes very different jobs than being a senior. For example, at that level, you may be expected to leave cross-functional projects that require the effort of several teams to land. Senior engineers don't often do this type of work. So suppose you did get assigned one of these cross-functional projects and you saw it as your ticket to get promoted. So you put 100% of your energy into the project, and let's even suppose that it lands, and let's even say that it's successful. You're getting accolades from everybody, and you feel like you've done your best work. And then, performance review time comes, and you only get an average rating, and you get passed over for your promotion. What gives? Well, because you put 100% of your energy into the next level project, you've neglected your duties at your current level. You didn't write a lot of code. You neglected maintenance and operations for the software that your team owns. You skipped out on all of your team meetings because it overlapped with the status meeting for the big project. And that's my last point. You need to meet and maintain expectations at your current level before you attempt to take on scope at the next level. This advice is true for all promotions, but especially true for higher level promotions. So what should you have done about the big project? By the time you get to the top of your existing level, you should have become really efficient with your work and maintaining expectations. The problem here is that you put 100% of your energy into the next level project, and completely neglected your existing duties and responsibilities. I would recommend going at the project with something like 75% of your capacity, which will leave you some time to meet the expectations at your current role. Because you're so efficient now, it won't take you that much effort to complete your at-level duties. The mistake is completely neglecting your duties at the existing level. This is a trap because likely the next level work is challenging and will take up all of your bandwidth if you don't watch out which will lead to a bad performance rating, even though you're killing it with your next level project. It's like reading a book by skipping chapters. Sure, you finished it in record time, but the ending didn't make sense, and who exactly is this Harry Potter character? You can't skip your existing responsibilities. That has to come first. Because at a lot of companies, annual performance reviews are based on meeting and exceeding expectations at level. Don't neglect this when trying to demonstrate next level skills to get promoted, because you'll be in this weird situation where you're doing next level work, but getting middling or even low performance reviews for your at level work. You have to do both, otherwise it will set your promotion back. If you found this video useful, none of it matters unless you also pair it with the advice from this video on how to speed run your promotion. In it, I give even more tips on how to get promoted faster. There's a lot to this stuff, so don't miss out.